this uh, segment, I'm going to follow up on what I did last time and talk about some of the unique uh, farm operations we have around the state and country that uh, would try to give you a little bit of help how to put the data in. Uh, one of the things that uh, is most uh, interesting on this, as you can see, uh, first slide I'm going to talk about is, is a screen capture of our decision aid. Uh, most, most of the, uh, uh, by the time you get to this process, you will have set up an account and then you'll start entering your data. Obviously, if you're entering for the first time, you're going to have, uh, there won't be any of those Smith Farm units up there, and it's just going to have that one uh, bar that says add a farm unit. Uh, once once you've, uh, so this farm has been put in, it's a test farm we've been using for a while, and, and uh, a couple of uniquenesses about this. Just remember, as I said last time, just because uh, you have one FSA farm number, in this case it's a uh, made up fictitious 111101, um, just because there's three program crops on that farm doesn't mean there's only going to be three uh, farm units on this analysis. And that's what we're going to get to uh, today and kind of follow up and, and, and try to give you some more advice on, on setting this up and putting it in the model. Uh, the very first case I'm going to do is, is uh, I I went through this last time. It's a very simple case. Uh, the uniqueness is here. Uh, the three commodities on your uh, FSA form are also the three commodities you have that you're farming. Uh, just remember the crop insurance side of the world would worry about whether it's a dry land or, or uh, irrigated or, or non-irrigated irrigated unit. So this is very simple to put it in our model. Uh, when you finish putting it in, you're going to have three uh, units in there. Uh, there's going to be wheat, corn, and grain sorghum, but you're going to be putting them in by practice. So you've got three non-irrigated practices in there. You're going to have your APH yield you've entered off the forms, and then hopefully you're going to give us at least 10 years of yields if you have that data. That's a very simple case. The next case is, is for also common, but it, it gets a little bit more complicated. The same three farm uh, program crops from on your FSA form, but on the crop insurance forms, you've actually got uh, the corn is split out into two different units. Maybe it's two different sides of a road. However, however you're doing it, but you're insuring two different units of corn. Uh, how you'd put that data in? Obviously, you'd have in this case, I just call it Smith Place West and East on that corn, and you would have you could have different crop insurance data, different APHs, different yield histories. Uh, on that as well. Uh, you notice that on the when you do this, you're going to have four crops in our model. And at the ta at to the main decision you will have is how, what do you do with the base acres? And my suggestion as it is here is just to, to split that out based on the planted acres. The next uh, case, also quite common, uh, you, you've got a uh, crop that you have base acres for and the program yields for, but you're not farming it, in it currently and you don't expect to in the future. Uh, how is that going to set up? You will also have to put that, that crop, in this case oats, you're going to have to list it. But the only thing you really have to put in there is the base acres and the program yields on that particular crop. Why? Because it's important for the base reallocation decision, not necessarily important for any insurance decision you have later. The uh, uh, the case where uh, you have uh, same farm number, but you've got the ir dry land and irrigated wheat, it works similarly to having uh, two different uh, corn practices, but it works similarly. Uh, in this particular case, uh, you would have uh, a, you put a crop in for non-irrigated wheat and a crop in for irrigated wheat that have different APHs. They would have uh, uh, different yield histories. What they would have, so, same as on the FSA form, it's going to say wheat, and it's going to say base acres, and it's going to say uh, yield. That yield is in generally going to be a weighted average yield of your irrigated, non-irrigated practices. Uh, we would split those base acres out across the irrigated and non-irrigated wheat uh, when we're putting this in. Less common case, uh, you have, uh, you're farming a crop now that you don't have any farm program information for. Uh, you just, maybe you've just been adding it. 
So how many f crops would you have it in? In this particular case, you would have four. It would be in as a crop, but there would be no uh, farm program information in currently in for the canola crop. The last uh, case that I talked to you about is last time is this one where you have several farm numbers and you've got dry land wheat where for some reason uh, that on the insurance form is one crop, dry land wheat, but it spans two FSA farm numbers. It's not very common, but there have been a number of people asking me about this situation and how you would analyze it. You would put it in the model by, uh, obviously you're going to be taking those acres and the yield data, the information from the crop insurance forms, and you're entering twice, there would be already be two different farm program FSA 156 forms uh, that you have bases and yields for that uh, wheat on. You'd just be getting the APH data and the yield data and putting it in twice. So hopefully I have uh, gone through rather quickly, but the key to the decision aid, I made, I made a statement at the very beginning last time that this is difficult. The only reason it's difficult is because you're combining the way the FSA has kept your data over time and the way that crop insurance works in, in uh, protecting different units and they're not the same in a lot of cases. So when you start moving forward and putting your data in, if you uh, have a question, you need to go ahead and, and send us an email or, or give us a call and we'll help you talk to you about this before you go. We don't want you to put a bunch of data in and have to redo it. So uh, until next time, uh, have a good day.